Repeating the same information can be tiresome. There are conditions where it makes sense, however. Imagine when you need to get the most recent information on directions and traffic to people who are coming to an amateur radio event, or during an emergency, where you want to be able to report the status of the emergency and the communications plan. We can provide that information using one-way transmissions in what is known as broadcast method. When can it be used in the amateur radio service? Find out on today's Radio KD8TTE. This is an area where terminology can be easy to confuse, so let's make sure that we understand a few key definitions. The first is broadcasting. Note that this refers to transmissions intended for the public. That is not only directly for the public to receive, but also relayed for the public. The next is information bulletin. This is specific. It's for amateur operators of subject matter of interest to the amateur radio service. Third is one-way transmission. This means transmission that is not part of an exchange between stations. These first three definitions all come from the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations, where it specifies the rules for amateur radio service in the United States. A fourth term can be found in the Allied Communications Publications, ACP, where government procedures are defined for Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. The term broadcast method simply means one-way transmission. This is important for amateurs to know when working with government stations, such as when part of an OXCOM function. Before we talk about what broadcast method is, let's first talk about what it's not. Taking your HT to the baseball game and calling the plays is not broadcast method. That's broadcasting. It's not permissible under the amateur radio rules in the United States. Similarly, if you are at an event that's newsworthy and you're reporting what's happening for somebody to be able to pick that up and report it to the public, even if your transmissions are not meant to be heard by the public, it's still broadcasting under the amateur radio rules. It's not a permissible one-way transmission. Other examples are going to be one-way transmissions that are going to be from an instrument. For example, a weather station. That is a one-way transmission, but it is permitted. That is telemetry data. If we have transmissions that are one-way that we're sending to an instrument or to a device, that likewise is a one-way transmission that is permissible in the amateur radio service. That is telecommand. So one-way transmissions are permissible under certain circumstances. We just have to differentiate what it is that we're doing. So let's take a look at some examples of when we might want to use broadcast method. Examples like our W1AW bulletins that are being sent are going to meet the definition of information bulletins under the rules, and those are permissible. Also, if we have somebody who is providing navigation and traffic information to an amateur radio event, that is also going to work because just like the W1AW bulletins, it's for amateur operators of interest to the amateur radio service. You can't do that for everything, but if the event is for amateur radio, it works. Another case that broadcast method can be useful is where the stations don't need to acknowledge an exact copy. And this happens all the time on uh, radio nets, for example, where we'll have an announcement uh, or words for the net if we're on a traffic net. Uh, round robin rag chew style nets are another example of this. Not every station needs to hear every word of every other station, and we don't have every station acknowledge every single transmission. Those are all examples of broadcast method. Broadcast method is explicitly allowed also for Morse code proficiency. And so ARRL and RRI code proficiency transmissions that are one way are likewise permissible. In emergency communications, if you've got an operation or even an exercise where you need to be able to report the status of the scenario, if you're going to be reporting which nets are in operation, which frequencies they're operating on, and so on, those are things that can also be useful to be sent out in one-way transmissions, maybe in some kind of a loop. 
you can advise that you have a transmission of that type if you're in a net as well. So you could report into the net, here's what I have, you can send the message out without requiring every station to acknowledge. In either case, those are going to be examples of one-way transmission. The critical issue is that you don't have the stations acknowledging receipt of the message. You can also use broadcast method to establish two-way communication. That's a brief transmission that's used for that purpose. Of course, one-way transmissions like CQ, calling a station, that's used to initiate a multi-party conversation, a two-way transmission, that's permissible. We can do the same thing with bulletins. Now it needs to be short. Uh, the rules say a short message that is used to initiate contact with another station, so it's not going to be a 10-minute blast, but we could provide some more information than just CQ. Just like in a contest, you could say CQ contest, you could also CQ some event or make some kind of brief announcement brief transmission that indicates a net going into service for example maybe some kind of an alert the black swan oxcom net like most other nets that are message passing nets will work by default with direct method Direct method is where a sending station contacts a receiving station. The receiving station listens to the transmission, ensures that the entire message has been copied correctly, and then will acknowledge receipt of the message. So it is a two-way transmission. That's typically what we're going to see. And as an OXCOM net, working with the idea of being able to provide interoperability among radio services on 5 megahertz, we'll also be using Z signals for those kinds of uh, directions. Let's take a look at an example. If we have control by voice, we might say something like N2LC, this is KDA-TTE, send WD8SDH over. And in that case, we're going to be able to give clear instructions. The station N2LC clearly has a message for WD8SDH and Net Control KD8TTE issues the instruction. Sending station will be able to make the transmission. The receiving station will acknowledge. We'll take a look at a digital example to see how the same thing is done. N2LC DE KD8TTE, so that's going to be the same call. N2LC, this is KD8TTE. The Z signal that we're going to be using, ZBR, that is send by. And then we add R on the end, which means direct method. We say what it is that we want to have sent, WD8SDH. That's the station that's going to be able to receive the traffic. And then, of course, the letter K by itself is the pro sign that means over. N2LC, the station with traffic, gets a call from KDA-TTE, the net control station. Instructed to send by direct method to WD8SDH, the station that is to receive the traffic. Whether instruction by voice or digitally, the transmission then begins. Critically, in a direct method transmission, the receiving station ensures a complete copy and then acknowledges receipt with voice procedure Roger or digital procedure QSL or ZEV or confirmed if using FL AMP. Now on the Black Swan Net we've also been sending messages by broadcast method and there are several times that this will happen. It's very straightforward. Net Control simply says to use broadcast method. The stations have to be listening and they have to be able to catch that instruction to make sure that they're doing the right thing. The receiving station in that case simply does not acknowledge receipt of the transmission. The sending station makes the transmission and now it's back to Net Control. In this case, N2LC, the station with traffic, a bulletin, gets a call from KD8TTE, the net control station. N2LC is instructed to send by broadcast method the bulletin. Whether instruction comes by voice or digitally, the transmission then begins from N2LC. It is important that both the sender and all the recipients understand the instruction. No acknowledgement from any receiver. The sender will not use FL AMP or ARQ because we don't want to have one missed letter cause the checksum not to come out so that there is a failure of the entire message. The sender knows the job is done once the transmission has completed and lets net control make the next transmission. 
A common case for broadcast method on the black swan net is when we are sending images. If we're going to be sending an image that is to all of the stations or to a group of stations, we can have each station acknowledge receipt, but in many cases there is no need. We send it by MFSK, it's not going to be a perfect bit for bit copy, we know that. It would be much faster if we were to send by broadcast method because it means that we are going to avoid having to do fills and provide all of the detail necessary for that bit for bit copy. We discussed this in Radio KDA TTE episode 57. Our ongoing tests show that while quality can vary and images can be missed, this is overall a good set of trade-offs. In a recent operation, several stations practiced task 2213, send MFSK image. Each station sent us what they received so we could make the comparison. Each transmission was received by several stations and now we can compare how they received. We can see the variability there. As we mentioned last week, we will be practicing this for NVIS day in April. Stations that do not want to report into the net or can't operate on 5 MHz can just listen in and pick up the images. If this were an emergency, we might designate a frequency where we send a bulletin or an image of a map by broadcast method, uh, let's say on the tens or some other known schedule. On the Black Swan Net, we've been practicing this on both our 3.5 MHz and our 5 MHz sessions and doing so without notice. Stations simply bring messages to the net as usual and sometimes they happen to be images. In a case where an image is for a specific station or has critical information, we might use direct method to make sure that they did get a copy of an image that is acceptable. Where we have a large number of stations, we will retransmit the same type of information or if we're dealing with operators who are untrained and might not know how to respond well, then it, we might find that it's easier and better to use broadcast method. So why the distinction? Why not just operate normally and let others operate by intercept? Well, the point is that we can save time by avoiding superfluous transmission of acknowledgments when it's really not necessary. That extra time can add up fast, especially where we've got a large number of stations on frequency, if we have stations who are not practiced, and stations that are not able to work properly with the good procedure, they come out of order, they start to double and so on. By recognizing broadcast method distinctly from direct method, net control can make that call and define when a particular message is to be sent by direct method and when a message is to be sent by broadcast method. We know that it's going to be useful to have an exact copy word for word, letter for letter of a written message. We're going to use direct method in that case. But where we've got an image where if something fades, it's a little bit fuzzy, there's a little bit staticky, but it still is useful for its purpose, then broadcast method is probably the way to go. The instruction is going to be specific to individual messages. So in a particular net session, you can have a combination of things that are sent by direct method and also by broadcast method. And that's it. Really what you need to do is just pay attention to net control. By broadcast method just means that the receiving stations do not send back a transmission acknowledging receipt of the message. And also, the sender doesn't wait for acknowledgement. As soon as that transmission is finished, the sender knows the job is done, and now net control makes the next transmission. When you're making those distinctions as net control, you're going to have to make sure that you know what it is that somebody's listing. So when somebody lists their traffic and they say they have an image distinctly from a particular message, that's going to allow you to make sure that you're making the call correctly. The rule of thumb, if you're using MFSK for images, you're going to be doing that by broadcast method and everything else by direct method. Well, I hope that you found that helpful. If you are in or around Ohio, please check us out on the Black Swan Oxcom net. If you're operating on NVIS Day 22, check the net's operation schedule for NVIS Day and try to pick up a few of the messages that we're going to be transmitting, some of those images that we're going to be sending in support of that operation as described in last week's video. 
Meanwhile, like and share the video if you found it helpful. Subscribe to the channel to make sure that you don't miss any of this stuff. Let others know what you're learning here and encourage them to improve their capability by training with us as well. We're looking forward to your questions, comments, and your discussion. Until next time, this is Radio KD8 TTE. Out.